Welcome to Mark A. Olet Stadium on the campus of Southern New Hampshire University. This is Game Face. Our producer today is Justin Kaminsky. I'm Bob Lipman. And what we try to do in this production from SNHU Athletic Communications is put a face to a name. We meet our athletes, we meet our coaches, and we do uh, invite you to go back on YouTube uh, at any point, put in SNHU Game Face, you can see some of our previous shows. And don't forget that you can pick up your Penman gear at snhupenman.com. Today we're going to start with a men's lacrosse athlete. He is Christian Perez, number 21, uh, joining us. And I think you're going to enjoy Christian's story. A junior and from Methuen, Massachusetts, Correct. right? Yep. Uh, welcome uh, to Game Face. And how about a, a little bit about your background and how you ended up at SNU first? Well, first, thank you for having me. And um, from Methuen, Mass, um, it's Methuen High School. Uh, senior year, COVID year, it was pretty tough. And um, a little, kind of talking to a couple of schools, I sent my film around. And about November, I got a call from Coach Calkins, and he gave me an offer to come play for this school. And I took a visit. I fell in love with the campus, fell in love with the facilities. Uh, felt like home. And first day I stepped on campus that fall, I knew this was the place I wanted to be. And ever since then, I've just stuck with it and I've loved it every day. And we're taping this uh, in January. We're not far away from the start of the 2024 season. And I think uh, everyone's pretty excited about yeah. what this season can look like for the Penman. Definitely, yeah. We're uh, very pumped up, working very hard. Um, the boys are really excited, counting down the days. We were first scrimmage in a few weeks, so really excited to get out there. Uh, we've been really getting together our team for a few years now, building the pieces and building this culture that we want to show everyone what we're about and fly around. Christian, I looked at the statistics and you've missed a lot more games than you've played yes. since you signed on. As a junior, you're must more than most looking forward to getting out on the field. Yes, definitely. Uh, I only got to play one game last year. Uh, it was pretty frustrating. Sad to not be out there. I had to watch from the sidelines on my crutches. But, you know, I've been working every single day since, just getting ready to get back out there. And I'm just itching for the first whistle to blow. I can't wait to get out there and play. And play you have because the story that we wanted to share with our fellow athletes and, and the SNHU community is that you're a member of the Dominican Republic national team. So I'm very interested to hear how this uh, developed and then we're going to tell the story about what's happened since. Uh, yeah, definitely. So this past summer, uh, actually spring, I saw a survey online uh, to sign up for this team. Uh, it's a, it was a brand new startup. And uh, I put my information in, and about a month later, I got put in an email chain with about 80 guys. And it had tryout information for the national team, but I was still recovering from injury. And I just sent in my film uh, from my freshman year here at SNU. And I wasn't really thinking too much of it. Uh, I didn't have a lot to show, but fortunately, I got uh, an opportunity to play on the team. And we had our first tournament in November. Uh, in Jamaica at the PLA, PALA Sixes Cup. And it was our first time playing together as a team. And it was, uh, it was an unforgettable experience. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Right, so how did they, they looked at your film and then you ended up, where did you go to for the, uh, the tryouts? And uh, so the tryouts were in New York, but okay. because I was still injured, I just sent in the film to the head coach and I guess he liked what he saw, and he gave me an opportunity to play. So I didn't really need to do any tryout. Take us through what the team then went through. How did you prepare, and, and you've already played some games. Yes, so every week we would meet on Zoom. Um, we really met on Zoom. It was very uh, awkward at first. You know, it was kind of hard to open up to everyone on a blank screen, but we learned all our plays and about each other through Zoom and text message as well. And we had about three months to prepare for our first tournament in November. Um, and then we all traveled down to Jamaica. And the first day we got there was the first time everyone meeting in person. A few kids knew each other, but for the most part, it was all first greetings. And right away, we all clicked. Uh, it was like I've known these guys my whole life. It, it 
it felt like here, it felt like family. It was really awesome to be able to like interact with a group of guys like that so fast. And then uh, take us into the tournament and, and how that progressed. So you, you got a few practices in together before you actually played some games. Yeah, just about one. And uh, wow. yeah, mor morning of, we, we did another walkthrough and we got there, we were very nervous. We were playing teams that are pretty, were ranked pretty highly on the world stage. And um, first game we played, I think it was Panama, and we were kind of working out the kinks. Um, but since after that game, we were really rolling. We got our first win that same day against Brazil. And the uh, second day we won against Jamaica. And we actually made it into the playoff bracket. Uh, and then we played against Puerto Rico in the semifinals, which is a very tough game. They're a very good team. And there's kids that played at every level, every division, a couple of kids that played in some pro leagues. And so it was very intimidating at first, but after a little bit, just to like settle down into it, um, it really felt like I was in the right spot, and our team knew that we could accomplish some big things. And uh, we ended up playing in the bronze game, and we, we, we won the bronze medal. Uh, I was fortunate enough to score the overtime winner. Uh, we won 22-21, and that was hands down the most surreal moment of my life. Primarily a defenseman, right? Yes. But you scored the, the game winner, was that, so that must have been one of the first times you've been able to do that in your career. Yeah, definitely. I played offense in high school, but when I came here, Coach Calkins offered me the, the opportunity to play some defense, and I couldn't say no. I, I would love to just get up and down the field. Um, but they had me in playing a more offensive primarily position. And it took me a few games just like getting used to it. But at, like the last day I played, it was like I've been playing offense <laughs> forever, and uh, I would say I had the best game I've ever played that uh, bronze medal game. How about what you learned about uh, the sport of lacrosse, and um, you know, we're not necessarily talking about world powers here, but the game really is being played all around the world yeah, now. Definitely. Um, I never have realized how big of a community it is. Um, we were in Jamaica, so they were kind of talking about one love. But it really is one love, and it really it brings everyone from all different cultures around. There was a ceremony on the first day where they were introducing all the teams, and people were bringing their own, like had their own customs and their music, and it was a big celebration. And it made me really realize like what I was what I was a part of and what I was playing for. And it also helped me realize I was playing for my country, and I was representing a huge group of people back home and my family and my family that I was playing with around me as well. Um, it was a really cool experience to realize that I'm playing for something bigger than just a sport. Christian Perez of SNA2 Men's Lacrosse, what's next for the Dominican uh, program? Um, so in the next year or two, we plan to go to the Dominican Republic. Uh, we want to go and travel around, go to a couple schools and teach young kids the game and start to develop a foundation there. Uh, we also have a few world qualifiers coming up. We have a tournament in May, I believe, and then we have another one in September. And our goal is to qualify for the 2028 LA Olympics. Boy, that would, that would be a terrific story, wouldn't yeah, it? Definitely. To see how this uh, all plays out. And it's your dad with the, the Dominican heritage? Yes, 100%. Um, he grew up in the capital of the Dominican Republic. I have a lot of family there. And I haven't seen them in a few years, but I used to go travel a lot when I was younger and see them. They're all very excited for me, and I got a lot of wishes and congratulations. So if I was really happy and proud to be able to do that for them. Take us uh, just real quick through uh, what your life on the SNHU campus is like, uh, mechanical engineering major. Yes, it's definitely very busy. Uh, definitely a lot of time management I've had to learn over the, the past year or two. Um, but I, I wouldn't trade it. I, lo I love what I'm learning. Um, my goal is just continue to get my bachelor's and also I want to obtain an MBA and I have a great job at a construction management company so I'm going to stick with that and uh, see where that takes me. Any other, uh, anything else you're involved with on uh, campus that you um, wanted to share? Not too much. Uh, I spend my time a lot in my room with my friends, uh, my girlfriend as well, but other than that I just kind of get as much done as I can, doing a lot of schoolwork and I like to train a lot. I go to the gym, I like to run and spend time with the boys, build some team chemistry. All right, and give us your best uh, sell to come out and see an SNHU men's lacrosse game. What are we going to see? Um, you're going to see some high action. Uh, 
I, I can say for myself that I think this is the best squad we've had in a long time, and you're not, it's not going to disappoint. Um, any game you go to is going to be a good game, and I think we're going to give every team in our conference a run for their money. I really believe it, so make it out as much as you can. We need all the support. Wishing you good health and, and good luck. Thank you very much. Christian Perez joining us on Game Face. Thank you for your time. This is SNHU Game Face. I'm Bob Lipman, joined today by the head men's lacrosse coach at Southern New Hampshire University, Paul Calkins, 35th Sixth. season, 30, yeah, 36th year, yeah. 35th yes. season uh, with the Penman. Uh, coach Calkins, it's, it's good to see you, and I know uh, it's been a long time since you've been out on the field, and it's time to get going for the 2024 season. It is. Well, thanks for having me. This is a great opportunity to, to talk about our program. So, Let me just... Uh, segue back in the first part of our interview, which you may have seen was with uh, defenseman uh, Christian Perez, uh, one of the, the many stories that we could tell about this year's team. But you have a, a young man who has suffered through some injuries here and yet has found uh, another opportunity with the Dominican uh, Republic National uh, lacrosse team, and I know you're thrilled for him in that opportunity. Oh, big time. It's, it's a great opportunity and a, and a great experience for him. Uh, when he came to me in the fall and, and, and was talking to me a little bit about that um, and the opportunity to go uh, to this tournament and stuff, I said, Christian, I said, take the time you need, go do it, because it's, it's something that uh, will stay with you for your life. It, it, is, it is a great opportunity. So it's, it's awesome to have that and also to represent us as well, mm -hmm. you know. Um, He's a, he's a great young man and, and, and certainly thrilled for him. All right, what's 2024 uh, going to look like? Uh, I think we're going to bring uh, an exciting brand of lacrosse. Um, you know, we talk about the senior class that uh, has been the, made the playoffs every year since. They've you know, stepped foot on campus, and uh, we brought in some, some very good grad transfers for a year with us. Um, we just added a, a ton of depth to our program. Uh, the boys are excited. We've been working hard since the fall, um, putting you know new things in, uh, revamping some old things, stuff like that. But uh, super excited. Um, uh, I can't wait to get out there and get that first game going under our belt. Yeah, in the last three years, you've had 500 records or yeah. above. You've competed against the best teams in the nation right until the final minutes, maybe didn't squeak a win past one of uh, those elite teams, but you have built the program to where you are right there. Yeah, we're ga gain respect. We, we've always talked about, you know, we want other teams to respect us and respect our style of play. Um, and, you know, one of, our, one of our foundations of our program is we talk about our work ethic and never giving up and, and things like that. But we... Yeah, we're there. Um, I think depth was one of those things that maybe we ran out of gas in the fourth quarter. You know, um, Lemoyne, who now is at the D D1 level, um, we were down by a goal in the fourth quarter with them yeah. and uh, just ran out of gas. Um, you know, Pace was another uh, team, top 15 team last year. We spotted them four goals and we outscored them 11-8 and lose in the final minute. Um, so. Uh, I think we, 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 we solidified some of those issues that we may have had, um, and I think this year will be a little different uh, for us. Well, one thing that is a little bit different is that you're going to go south, yeah. and you haven't done that a lot lately, and you get an opportunity to play a couple games in North Carolina. Yeah, we, we've been talking about it for the last couple of years, about trying to get something to happen. Our schedule just didn't allow that uh, for us to, to make that trip. Um, we, we've done the Florida trip in the past. We've done some Baltimore trips and things of that nature, but it's been a long time. Um, it's a tremendous amount of stress on me to, to organize and get this put together, but uh, the boys did a lot of fundraising to, to raise some funds to make this happen, and my part was is I'll do all the organization. Um, I got some tremendous contacts down in North Carolina with you know, Catawba, Mount Olive, Belmont Abbey, you know, in Wingate, so it made it easy to find games. Um, you know, having those relationships certainly made it a lot easier to organize all these things. But yeah, we're excited to go down there. Yeah, I mean, ideally, uh, you know, in terms of maybe financial reasons, you'd love to be able to stay within the region. Yeah. Uh, you almost always can get on the field, even when there's snow. But uh, this is this is going to be a special time, I think, for bonding yeah. too for the team. Yeah, it's getting the guys off campus for a week and, you know, um, taking them to maybe a little bit warmer weather. Um, mm -hmm. It's not going to be 70, 80 degrees, but 
um, it's certainly going to beat the, the 30 degree weather that we're going to be practicing in. So uh, super excited for it. And it, you know, the last time that we've done a long trip was certainly a great bonding in, in, in camaraderie experience for our program and, and brings guys closer. All right, back to the Northeast 10. And uh, you touched on the, the one big storyline was LeMoyne's decision to take its athletic program up to Division One. They've been uh, certainly one of the powers in the Northeast mm-hmm. 10. Still some pretty good yeah. programs here. Without a doubt, the NE 10 is a premier Division Two yeah. league. Yeah, uh, LeMoyne was always the gold standard, without a doubt. And, and everybody tried to you know, model and, and, and do what they did as a program, but never really could replicate it. Um, a few teams uh, have, have done some you know, great things, uh, but I will argue with anybody that Northeast 10 is the granddaddy of them all. It's the best Division II conference in the country from top to bottom. Um, you know, you got the Pace, the Bentleys, the St. A's, you know, St. A's, you know, St. Uh, St. Michael's, Assumption. There's some great teams in there. There's great athletes on every team, great coaches everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, it's certainly, you know, there isn't a game that you can't go into that you didn't put your, your best foot forward for that week and prepare for. You have to prepare for everybody. And, um, and it's, that's why it's the, the best conference in the country, uh, Division Two wise and the Penman will uh, all get it started in the month of February. And again, snhupenman.com for the uh, the latest schedules. Uh, coach, not only have you been the head men's lacrosse coach here, and I'll correct it to 36 years, but you played here, you went to school here, you, you came to campus a long time ago, <laughs> and you've never left. Uh, no, I have not. So I came... Uh, as a scrawny little 145-pound midfielder, played hockey and lacrosse here back in the early 80s, 83 to be exact, um, and uh, just never left. Uh, it's, it's been a great place, a special place in my heart. Um, um, bleed blue and gold, you know, so it's, it's one of those places that I, uh, and to, this is where I'll retire. Uh, who knows when that'll be, but... Uh, I still have a passion for what I do, um, but yeah, I've been here a long time, so I've seen a lot of changes. Well, first of all, you're playing here at, <laughs> at Penman Stadium. You used to play uh, up by the field house? Yeah, by the field house. It was a dirt field, a grass field, um, mostly dirt, but by the time we got halfway through the season, um, we never told our opponents back in the day that that field was tilted, so we made sure the coin flip, we were going downhill in the fourth quarter. Um, but, yeah, it was that way. So um, until we uh, got that changed out and got a turf field, they leveled it. Um, it's, it, was, it was a great place to play. And way back in those days, things were different. Campus was small. Everybody came out to those games, and, mm. and that's what we're hoping for now. Did you play in the open air ice hockey rink? <laughs> I did. We used to have practices outside. We played. Uh, uh, one of the funny stories I have is we played St. Michael's, I believe it was. We played basically five minute periods so that they, it was snowing like a son of a gun, and they had it. We played for about five, seven minutes, and they we clear. They'd have to get out and clear the snow off the the ice. Go back out, play another until we got a full game in. Uh, yeah, it was quite interesting. You've told me stories, too, about uh, they, they kept you very busy throughout the year, not just uh, being a coach early yeah. on, but you ran the intramural yeah. program. Yeah. There was, New, was it New Hampshire yeah. College at the time? No, it was. It, was, it made the change. Um, so for many years, I was just part-time, raise a family, my three boys, and, and stuff like that, work in construction. And then, you know, I'd be literally on a, on a scissor lift, you know, 30 feet in the air, writing up a practice plan for that day and and go home, take care of my three boys and do their activities and then run here for practice and stuff like that. Um, And then eventually when they made it, um, I think now we've been almost 17 years now, 16, 17 years here full time, um, made a full time position. um, So I didn't have to work all day long in construction, come here, but they gave me three duties. Um, I was running the intramural sports uh, for the entire campus. I was also working game day operations and day-to-day operations um, and coach of lacrosse. So I had to manage my time somewhere in there. Um, I don't know how I did it, but I did it. And uh, I had a method to my madness, and that was to build the intramural sports so much that they could, they'd could they have to take it away from me because I couldn't handle it. But um, we certainly you know, did the right thing. The university did the right thing. And, and now I just stay with coaching and, and organizing this program as basically the CEO. 
It looks like it's uh, going to be a fun 2024 20, season. It is. It is. I'm, I'm excited. I can't wait for people to see the product that we put on the field. Um, uh, I think the fall uh, certainly gave us a, a, a lot of energy uh, coming out of the fall. So uh, we're excited. We're ready. Coach Paul Calkins, thank you for joining us on Game Face. Thank you for tuning in. And again, if you'd like to see one of our previous episodes, uh, head to the YouTube and uh, just put in SNHU Game Face. That'll take you to that. Uh, for uh, my producer, Justin Kaminsky, I'm Bob Lipman. Take care. See you soon. Go Penman.